Hello everyone, I'll try to make this very short video. I'll show you how to use Arduino Uno with Ethernet Shield uh, along with MQTT to make a switch to where you could, you, could, you could wire a switch to this and send commands to your broker or any other subscriber. So uh, to demonstrate how this works, so I have here a digital switch with a, with a little LED. And whenever I press the switch, this LED lights up and then the Arduino sends this command um, to the broker through the ethernet cable over here and um, I'll just show you how that works uh, so real fast I just could click this button this light turns on and it just sent a command to the broker letting them know that I uh, pressed the button and then whenever I let go the LED turns off letting me know that the button is no longer pressed uh, really fast a lot of people ask me for schematic, so I drew this really fast one. So we have Arduino Uno here, and it's connected to, of course, you know, five volts, and then the Ethernet cable is connected straight to my router. Don't make the mistake of connecting the Ethernet cable to the laptop or the computer. This goes to to a router or an Ethernet switch or something. This does not like connect to your computer. So I have that connected to my router, and uh, the router, of course, c communicates wirelessly with my laptop. And I'm and I'm using uh, you know the window, a broker window, MQTT, uh, Node Red. They communicate here, and then it sends to Uno. Uno. The LED that I have here is connected to pin 8 with a small resistor. Pin 9 is for the switch. I have this uh, digital switch here. If you want to make your own switch, this is how you would do it. You would do one side negative or ground, and then you would have your switch here. And on the other, other side of the switch, you would connect with a small resistor to positive 5 volts. And then this side over here between the resistor and the 5 volts, you, you would connect to your pin 9. Pin 10, 11, 12, 13 are for the Ethernet shield. You cannot use these pins. If you want to um, have extra auxiliary things hooked up, make sure you do not use these pins. Leave them alone because they are for the Ethernet shield to communicate with the Uno. And then over here I have my Raspberry Pi, which I have a USB, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, USB uh, Wi-Fi module on there. And uh, this connects to the router wirelessly and my laptop wirelessly. Okay, before I show the Arduino code, I want to show you these, my flow with the nodes that I have. Uh, I have uh, these purple ones are the MQTT. So this is um, receiving. These two are uh, topics that are being received by. Um, broker from the Arduino and this is the topic that is being sent to the Arduino. So we're sending to the Arduino either zero off or one on and then we're listening in these two topics and then displaying the messages over here. So in the out switch I just have my um, IP address of my broker topic out switch done IP address of the broker topic uh, out topic done then these are the inject nodes uh, this one is just a string of zero, and uh, this one, double click, is just a string of one. Done. And this is the end topic of the IP address of the broker. Done. So I can manually inject, I can click these buttons and send either zero or one to Arduino because Arduino is listening in the end topic. And for the code, uh, this is the code that you'd upload to the Arduino. Um, I have a little quick explanation and then I have the, uh, these are the libraries. Uh, the IP address of the UNO is over here. IP address of the broker is over here. Then I have a few variables. Um, we'll, be, we'll be listening in a callback function for the commands from the broker. So if, if a broker sends a one, it will turn the LED on and then it will respond that the LED has been turned on. And if the broker sends a zero, payload is a zero, it will turn the LED off and it will respond to the broker that the LED is off. And these are the ones and zeros that are being sent from the broker. Okay? Now, in the setup function, I have the set up the pins. Um, we are subscribing. So initially, whenever Ethernet, whenever the Arduino boots up, we publish in this topic, hello world, meaning we have connected. And then we subscribe to the end topic. Remember, the end topic is we're listening for the commands one or zero in the loop. Um, this is kind of complicated, but it works. If somebody knows a better way of doing this, let me know. But uh, button state, it reads the switch. 
stores it in the button state variable. If a equals 1, in the very beginning I have a equals 1 and b equals 1. If a equals 1, proceed to this function, of, to this if, if statement. If button state is low, meaning if the switch has been pressed, make the LED turn on and then re respond in, in the out switch topic of 1. Out switch topic is this one. It's going gonna, it's gonna to receive a 1 from the Arduino. Then it's going to make B equals to 1 and it's going to add 1 uh, to A. So whenever this loops back around, A will be 2 and it will not execute this part of the code. The reason for that is because whenever you press the switch, it will spit out a 1. Now if A remains 1, it will spit out 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 and it will overload the the buffer and uh, it will this whole thing will be all full of ones and you don't want to do that you just want to send the one once to let it know that it's been um, turned on okay so um, it will make a equal to 2 and then B will equal to 1 now if B equals to 1 which we just made it a 1 over here it will proceed to the next if function which is this one here now it will not go past here until the button has been released so whenever I release the button, it becomes high and this starts to execute and then it will turn the LED off, letting me know that the switch has been released and it will respond in the out switch topic zero back to the Arduino. Arduino will receive a zero here and it will display it on the board. And then um, it will make A equal to one, meaning now we can now this function can be executed. And then it will add 1 to B, meaning that this function cannot be executed anymore. So now it was going to do the client loop and it's going to loop back up. And then it's going to read the button state A equals to 1 because we made it 1 over here. And it will, it, will, it will bump this wall until I press the switch low and it breaks through and it executes all of this. Makes B negative 1, makes A 2 and A cannot... And I cannot execute this function because A is now 2. And since the only thing that can be executed is this one because we just made it uh, 1. And it will keep bumping into this wall until I, re I release the switch. And it will execute this function. And let me show you how that works. I want to minimize that. So over here, um, I'm going to restart the Pi. Okay, it says hello world and it sent out a 0. Let me know that the switch is not pressed. Remember on our, on our thing over here in the setup function, um, it publishes in the out topic, hello world, and then it subscribes to the in topic. And because the switch is off, it, it I'm sorry, switches off, it spits out a zero. So over here we have a zero from the out switch topic and from the out topic, we got hello world. So now whenever I press, I send Arduino a zero, it will say that the light is off. Whenever I send Arduino a 1, the light is on and you can see over here the LED is on. Sorry, it's really blurry. Now, whenever I hit a 0, LED turns off and it's off on top. If you can see it over here, it's off. Now, that's that. Let me clear this out. Now, whenever I press the switch, the LED will turn on, see it's on, and then it's sent out a 1. Now when I re whenever I release the switch, the LED will turn off and it will send out a 0. See if I let go really fast, it just does that. So if I didn't have these A's and B's in here, once you press a switch once, it would continually um, just do that and it would fill up the buffer. So that's why I have those A's and B's um, to make it to where it only executes at once. So this is how you have a switch connected to MQTT. Um, hopefully this makes sense to you all. Let me know what you think. Um, it took me a long time to get this working. I had problems with uh, the switching part, but now whenever I press it, the LED turns on and then you can see these commands are being sent. Let me clear this out and I can send here also. 
Okay. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you need a copy of the code, um, I should have it posted under some of the comments or somewhere under, uh, or just ask me and I'll give it to you. Hopefully the schematic made sense, but um, I'll show you later how to have multiple devices or something, having multiple switching devices. Have a great day. Bye-bye.